these are the render settings for a basic uh, HD TV render. So go into your render settings, the output tab, press this triangle and ensure that your output is film video HD TV 1080 2997. Next, ensure that your frame range is set to all frames. After you've done that, check on your anti-aliasing settings. If you render your image and you don't notice any anti-aliasing problems yet, you don't need to change your settings. But if you see any issues with jagged edges here, change from geometry to best. Also, change your filter from still image to animation. That'll soften up the edges a little bit and uh, give you less hum when it's broadcast, which is a good thing. Next, on the Save tab, you want to adjust your settings uh, for how you plan to render this thing. I'm going to render out not as a TIFF, but as a QuickTime Movie. For all your quick renders, you can get away with a QuickTime Movie. If it's a really huge render and you can't afford to lose any frames if your computer crashes, use a TIFF. I'm going to turn on Alpha Channel. and leave 24-bit dithering on as well. I'm also going to turn on compositing project file. So choose save. Target application is After Effects. Include relative and include 3D data. Multipass right now is not currently active and I'll go over multipass render settings later. You typically want to name your file after your project file name. So I'm naming this C4D2AE Plain Test 001. And you do this so that if you ever deliver a video to your client and they say, oh, I, I, we, we like this, but really we want it to look more like the one from four versions ago, you can go to the project file that matches that exact render. And if you don't specify a file path, it defaults to the same location as wherever your C4D file is saved. At this point, we are good to render. So if I press this middle button, I'm rendering out at HD res my entire animation. 